Hi everyone, welcome back. I am going to try the same colors I've done on a previous pour. I don't know if it'll be the one right before this or not. So let me show you the colors. I'm very determined. I tried it shortly after my last fail and it was better, but the center was all messed up. So I scraped it. So my husband told me not to, and he might have been right, but I did scrape it. So we're going to try the same colors, and I'm hoping for a better success. I'm torn about maybe doing a black and white cell activator. So I don't know. We're going to see as we go. But Australian Salmon Gum from Matisse. Get that at Blick. Um, this is... Dreamsicle from Color Art. I love it. I did. I do think part of my problem with this bloom last time is this was too thin. So I added some more of my untinted house paint um, to thicken it up and it's better now. Sometimes if one of your layers is too thin that can also be part of your problem. So Australian Red Violet from Matisse. I'll tell you, um, I know some people have shared Several of you actually have shared that you do get discouraged when you're doing blooms and you're not getting results. I just want to encourage you that this is not an easy technique. It is very rewarding, um, but there's a lot of like chemistry that goes into it. You know, you can have all your paints be good and your pillows too thin or too thick and that can cause problems or you can have everything's good but your cell activator is not right or so your paint can be too glossy I mean there's there's a lot that goes into it so the other color that's a little too thin but I didn't have enough room to um, thicken it up is this purple sage from color art which is gorgeous by the way I was torn between using this one and I think it's wild plum but uh, this one is really pretty. So it's a little bit thin, but not as bad as the Dream Sickle was the other day. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then my custom purple, I just threw away the paint skins or I would show you guys how just gorgeous it is. This custom purple is Australian Red Violet and Indanthrene Blue. Um, the Indanthrene Blue is from Holbein. I did have to thin this out a little bit the other day. So let's kind of get going. I'm going to kind of talk as I go because I tend to have long videos. I personally, when I watch other artists, I like for them to talk and tell me what they're doing, what they're thinking. Realize that's not everybody's cup of tea. But and if you're watching to kind of be amused, I can see why that's not your cup of tea. But if you're watching because you do the same kind of art and you learn from other people, um, I love to hear their process and like when things go wrong I like for them to share what they're thinking how they're gonna fix it I mean the whole nine so that's kind of my bend if you wonder why oh my gosh she talks to herself not really on purple well I, yes I do but I, I'm really trying to share the process with you guys it also kind of serves as a great journal like when you come back and you're like how did we do this if I were to duplicate it which we all know that's kind of difficult, but how would I do this again? It's like a journal for me, you know? So, so yeah. Um, but as a result, sometimes you hear me externally process. So, um, the other thing I was having trouble with is, this is my Valspar pillow. And there's a couple of bubbles in it, but... The other thing I was having trouble with the other day is there was just some hideously difficult bubbles in my eggshell and no matter what I did they were, even though the paint had been sitting for several days, it was obnoxious. So I'm going to save that and use it for coasters um, and I decanted some of my Valspar. Now that is not to say that the the Glidden eggshell is not a good pillow. It is. It's just that mine had been sitting there for so long that when I mixed it up to pour it, it just acquired more bubbles and it was really annoying. So anyway, if you're new, welcome. Um, sometimes I'm more organized than this, but not often. Um, I do have a bloom mixing tutorial where I show you 
good ingredients that work well for me in the US. It doesn't mean that's all I ever use, um, but there it is in the description box below. I also get a ton of questions about Cell Activator on various Facebook groups and stuff, so I'm probably gonna do a video just explaining Cell Activator when I get around to it in all my spare time that I don't have, right? Okay, so we're gonna put the salmon gum down first. Um, as our first puddle. And I've been going through this color pretty often now. This one's also mixed a little thin. I'm probably gonna end up having to make a little bit more. I went from mixing it and not really using it to now I wanna use it on the bottom of all the petals. But isn't that just the way art is, right? I was telling my husband the other day, like, as an artist, I like colors that I never liked before. Because there's something about the creative part of our brain, I think, that sees the potential for color palettes and different things. And you're like, yeah, maybe that color's not too bad after all. Maybe I want to check it out. Now, the one thing I'm going to do different is I'm going to put the purple sage next. And because it's it's very thin, I want it underneath the the acrylic colors on the top. So then we're gonna do the Australian Red Violet. And, oops, I think my dog just went in our room to scratch. He does that when he knows we're gonna get after him if he bites or scratches. So he goes and like hides in our room so he can not get fussed at. But I'm on to him. All right. So that was the Australian Red Violet, which is just always a beautiful color. And here's the custom purple. Um, Mitchell Grimma, I think, is the first person who told me this combination works, but he was talking about Australian Red Violet and Indigo uh, from Matisse. And so one day I was going to, I remembered that he had made that comment and um, I was like, oh, I need to try that. And then I was like, oh, indigo is so expensive. And danthrene blue is kind of similar. Let's see how that works. So now let me tell you my conundrum. I'm really tempted to try black and then white. So when you put white on the top versus like white and then black cell activator that is um, what happens if you get your blow right which is always a question right is the black creates this really cool outline underneath the white and so you get these really cool distinct cells I have some videos where that's actually worked out really well um, so that's why I want to try it. But if I don't get my blow right, then I'll have sections that are just black and that might look weird, but I'm gonna try it, right? It's just paint, so let's go for it. So this is Amsterdam Lamp Black and Australian Floetrol Cell Activator. It's approximately three parts Aussie Floetrol to one part paint. And the other thing that I sometimes struggle with is making sure I put just enough cell activator, but not too much. Like that actually might be too much. Then my white is M gram titanium white and Osteoflotrol, about the same ratios. The only thing is the black has been mixed up longer and I did thin out my white, so it might be a little bit too thin. Maybe not, but it's a little too thick. And then, yeah, I think it's probably a little too thin now. All right, so let me go for this. Not too, too far away. Uh 
Great. Okay, so getting some good reactions, but I definitely have had a challenging blow. So I'm going to give this a second to come back, and I'm going to come back to that. Oh, that's still kind of a problem. I should have just left that alone. That may not work out. So there's some parts that are really great looking. So let me and we have enough pillow paint that even though we don't have a perfect glow, because we don't, it might work out. Let me zoom you in a little bit and see if we can fight the autofocus. This light is it's like hit or miss whether it helps or hurts, you know? Okay. Seems like it might be helping. Hold on. <laughs> I checked the camera because it seemed like it was having trouble focusing. And there was a piece of fuzz or something like right on the lens. Great, right? Okay, let's see if we get what we want. So, I've given it a second to come in. It's just very gently breaking the surface tension there in the center where we have quite a bit. Some of it will work itself out in a second as we spin, but it does help sometimes to give it a little boost with the turkey baster or, you know, with your own breath. The problem is sometimes I blow too hard. Maybe the best I'm going to get done there. Okay. Oh, I may have just moved it out of. Ay, ay, ay. Let me zoom you in a little bit better so you can see. It's really beautiful though. And it's helping to like contrast the issue I was having before where we weren't getting enough color in the center. The black is helping. So gentle spin. And now I'm going to see if I can't recenter it a little bit. I think the black was actually a nice choice. Oh, we have a paint glob right here. Well, that may not have actually gotten it, but let's see. The only thing is we didn't do great right here. And I don't think I can catch that. Nope, not well. And I didn't do great right here either. So we're going to have some parts that are just a little iffy. But you know, this is already 10 times better than the mess from the other day. And there's parts of it that are just really going to be pretty. What is going on here? What in the world? It's weird, like when the light hits it in a certain way, you can see globs and stuff in your paint that you probably couldn't otherwise see. And the color palette itself is beautiful. And what's always kind of fun is when you really like a color palette together, it might make a great bloom, but it'll also make a really nice set of coasters and like I desperately need to restock my Etsy shop so you may see me do it on a set of coasters so I can do that. And the cool thing is even though it's all the same technique and all the same colors, it will look completely different on a tiny surface. So, but this is much more 
what I had in mind. I told you guys I would get it right. I just couldn't keep practicing that day. So this is much more what I wanted to see. Even if I hadn't used black and white, we have a lot more color represented here in the middle. So in my case, if I were to take a guess, the culprit was the paint being too thin in that one or two layers. And there is some paint, like a big paint booger right here. And it doesn't want to come out. So if I can't get it, I'm just going to let it dry there. I would prefer to get it before it spins all the way out. But it's like the more I mess with it, the worse it gets. So. Okay, man, really got muddy right there. Usually I can just pull them out gently. It did not go well there. Oh well, okay, let me stop messing with it before it gets worse. <sighs> oh man, these colors are just fantastic together. I know originally I wasn't going to use the Australian Red Violet, but then when I thought of how beautiful it would be with this custom purple, I was like, man, it can't be bad. Like, I just tend to use that in blue-black a whole lot, so sometimes I'm like, okay, give the other colors a turn, you know? But, man, these colors are beautiful together. And this was exactly what I had in mind. I mean, did I do perfect on the blow? No, but this right here is amazing. And I was a little heavy handed with the cell activator, which is why we still have a little bit of a pool in the middle. We do still have some ribbons of color where my blow needed some work, but I can still, I can deal with that. And uh, I just got paint all over me and maybe the floor. So, Um, oops, that's why we wear paint clothes. So we have some ribbons of color that um, don't have any cells or anything, but I don't know, I don't think it really takes away from anything. You know, my temptation is to try to like merge this one part a little bit better. And I kind of did, kind of got that weird white part, but I don't want to overspin and then have crappy composition. So there's a couple places where the white has come through the pillow. So all I'm going to do to fix that is just kind of go, just gently pop the bubble and go down and back up. And sometimes, sometimes you can let them alone, but like when they come through early enough, it's best to just go ahead and get a hold of them because otherwise, if you miss them and they come through when they dry, you can still fix them. Um, you just have to, um, you know, like either paint very carefully over that spot or take a toothpick or something toward it um, with some paint on it. And I've definitely fixed my share. So let me bring you down for a close-up so you can see this little beauty. Um, and compared to what we had before, oh my gosh, I'm way out of frame. I like it. Sorry that the camera was out of focus, but here is the close-up, much more like I wanted. It's a perfect no, but this is a lot more what I had in mind. So the colors are really pretty. This is my favorite part right here. You see what I mean about how the black outlines the cells? It, may not be like the main event obviously it's a little more heavy-handed in the center but you see the really pretty definition in the cells with the now it would be completely different if you put the white on the bottom and the black on top then the cells would be big and bubbly so just in case that's ever puzzled anyone i know when i started using the dual cell activator i was like how do you know which one to put first and it sometimes it's opposite of what you think but the middle you can see um so when we talk about 
using a regular acrylic paint underneath your cell activator because you get better lines. You see how this is kind of fuzzy where I blew deep enough where the pigment came up? If you have pigments right underneath the cell activator, you'll get a fuzzier center. But you see where I didn't blow too hard and the other, the other paints kind of hung in there. It's crisp and clean. They're both pretty, but that's one of the reasons why structurally it works a little bit better if you use like a regular acrylic paint than a pigment or a really sparkly paint right underneath your cell activator. Sometimes it's just personal preference though. It's not a rule, it's just a, hey, this is one of the things to look out for. But anyway, I love this much better. Um, I feel a lot more victorious now that this one wasn't a complete flop. So sometimes we just have to keep pressing in. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget about the description box below. There's a 20% off discount code for color art using Mandy1120. Um, I make uh, my cell activator with Aussie Flow Trial, Flow Trial, which I get from Pixel Paint Designs, and there's a 10% discount code for you down there. So take advantage of all the stuff in the description box. Let me know what you think of this bloom, and uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye.